pump the brakes, Ben. Don't get too high. Everyone's counting on you. Be objective. Oh, we're recording. The Denver Broncos found their guy. The win against the Indianapolis Colts today could not have been better from a vibe standpoint. Uh, I made a 12-hour trip to go and watch, take my son to his first ever Broncos game. We're going to look at all of my favorite Bonex throws and why his performance was even better than we thought. Um, having been there, there are so many takeaways just watching Bonex's leadership uh, and, and so many so many takeaways from our first preseason game. But uh, the true fact of the matter is that the national media is starting to take notice and all over Twitter, people are starting to hop on the bandwagon and start like coming around to what we've been saying all offseason, which is Sean Payton has never won less than seven games in his entire career. And he now is a quarterback. He now truly has three quarterbacks who can run the system that he wants. Our defensive line is just a bunch of maulers and... Um, we have the best corner in football. We have just a plethora of edge rushers. Like our team is good. Our rookie draft class that we had just showed out in a in a number of ways, and it was phenomenal. But I think people just do not be surprised over these next couple of preseason games to see that Vegas line shift because I think people are seeing that the Broncos that the chat GPT articles that the rest of the media wrote all year about this team are just blatantly lazy and wrong. Uh, seeing here, Chase G Daniels broke it down like Bo Nix hit 71% completion and he had two just easy throws that were drops. Like one of them went right through Vele's hands and one of them went right through Josh Reynolds' hands. And they also made some incredible catches, so that's fine. But, you know, in his limited sl snaps, sometimes going against the ones sometimes having a second string offensive line and second string receivers, he still threw for 71% uh, completion percentage, 125 passing yards, one touchdown, four scoring drives. And that was the thing to me that every single time we were in the red zone, my mind, my mindset was still back with that Russell Wilson mindset of like, Oh, here we are again. We're going to kick a field goal. And he led us on four scoring drives and just some really easy little uh, mistakes that were made that really could have been more points even faster. Like uh, he had one drive down there where Vele, he thought Vele was going to run the fade to the corner like he did in that amazing preseason where he had the one-handed catch and Vele ran a slant and both threw the the fade instead. And like that's just a really easy communication error um, that could have been fixed. But man, there were a number of times when his back was up against the wall that he just went out and balled out of control. Um, so let's take a look at some of his passes. So it started off rough. Um, I had my my hand on my son's leg, and I'm like, here it is, Jay. This is Bo Nix's first throw, and it was rough. Um, so here here's his first throw. You see, like, he's got a guy diving, and he kind of throws off of his back leg. Should not have thrown this. Dulcich was open earlier on this play uh, and throws it when he, he shouldn't have. This was, like, literally we are sitting right above that. And so we saw this whole thing happen. And I think that that could have been an interception if you had better corner play. You see, like, you do have space in that zone that you could have hit him. And he leads him right into contact. Dulcich gets up from this play and is, takes himself off the field. And I was like, here we go again. And that really was the low point of the game. Dulcich comes back in, played the rest of the time with the ones and the twos, and is completely fine, not even on the injury report. Uh, only person on the injury report is Lucas Kroll with a toe injury. Um, but Sean Payton thinks he's going to be fine and does not think it's a serious injury. So to get out of a preseason game with very little on the injury front when we see what just happened to the Kansas City Chiefs and Hollywood Brown, uh, it's a very, very good sign for the Denver Broncos. So let's let this breathe, look at uh, kind of some plays that it just kept getting better from there. So here it is on second and 10, that same drive. Uh, seeing it, his ability to step up in the pocket, just completely different than Russell Wilson, who was always rolling out of a, ba a bad pocket. Um, throw in there off platform. And that's a play there to Devon Vele, where when I saw the other angle of it um, that they showed on the replay screen, Vele could have got it had he, you know, it was low. It had to be low. He's covered there. But it had Vele gone down with his hands down instead of just one hand down, I really think he could have come up with that. Certainly the catch he made in training camp was way harder than that one. So we have two incompletions right off the bat. It was looking scary here. And uh, we see him here, again, not r rolling forward off of his left foot, finding Cortland Sutton there in space. Amazing throw right there. Um, here thrown off his back foot, finding Josh Reynolds there, who I think is going to 
really make some people around the NFL be like, what y'all got Josh Reynolds that like I've been on two or three other different shows where I have brought up Josh Reynolds. and like, we didn't even know the Broncos got Josh Reynolds. And I'm like, yeah, I know that's because the national media doesn't pay any attention to this team whatsoever. Uh, seeing Bo's wheels were incredible there. Look at this. This is the one that literally that is a dime. Like that is exactly like the throw we looked at a couple days ago where he's sinking it into a net from that same spot. That is a perfectly placed ball. Again, Reynolds is a great player. I'm not worried about it. That goes right through his hands for an incompletion. I think that was probably his best throw of the day. Uh, but do not worry. We're down 3-0 here. Uh, here he is. And that is a screen pass that I think they read, and he, he put too much sauce on that one. But really, at this point, I think we've gotten through all of Bonex's incompletions. None of them were egregious. And you're talking about a rookie in his first snaps in the NFL uh, if I sound excited, it is because this is the most excited I've been about a Denver Broncos team since our Peyton Manning days. Like, I think maybe, you know, the recency bias, I was really excited about the end of the Drew Locke season when we went 4-1, and one, but I nowhere near seeing what Bo Nix was like in this game and seeing that it, it really is his team. As the game was ending, um, my son and I were uh, just a couple rows up right on the Broncos bench, and Bo Nix had his helmet off and was standing right between McGlinchey and Garrett Bowles right next to Sean Payton with his earpiece in. And and he was the first player on high-fiving teams when our defense made a stop, the, the first player high-fiving uh, the backup offense. And it, he has a lot of Tebow-like leadership qualities about him and uh, uh, the same Tebow-like confidence, but just with a much better actual football mind uh than tim tebow did and and i'm just i'm here for it and very very excited so uh looking here this was awesome seeing him off play action is dirty like very good you know he probably um he he hitched a little too much there and sma gets a three yard gain here um here we go back here um i mean all that talk about oh there's another incompletion there um off play action looking great. Nice touch on that pass there to Devon Vele. And then seeing there it is right there, his touchdown to Mims. Like he, watching that in real time, I don't even know. He he goes from the, the fake handoff to the throw so fast that it was it was ridiculous to see in person because again, that's that's a play that that Russell Wilson just rolls around back there and Sean Payton's like, What? You're on the one yard line. How did how did that just happen? Uh, And so we're seeing just some amazing, amazing flashes here, seeing the arm strength. And it's truly, I I understand um, that it, we're going to talk about this play here in a second. I understand that um, Bo Nix is certainly not Patrick Mahomes. He is not Josh Allen, but Drew Brees was not Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen either. Drew Brees had a wicked fast processor and put the ball all over the place. It's, It's just like Nikola Jokic is not LeBron James but he's the best player in the league. Like he puts the ball where it needs to go and he's physically not as talented as anyone else in the entire NBA when it comes to just his physicality. But he just won a bronze medal with a bunch of plumbers from Serbia. And I think Bo Nix could be the Denver Broncos version of Nikola Jokic. He puts the ball uh, where it needs to go. He is a leader on this team and that is undoubtable seeing it. So watching this play, incredibly discouraging series right there. Uh, Sean Payton clearly was gunning for um, like two minute uh, seeing Bo Nix in the two minute drill. That was about the minute 40 point right there. Sean Payton had used uh, two timeouts to make sure that Bo Nix had it. The Indianapolis Colts had just scored and we we're excited to see what is Bo Nix going to do. He makes that nice pass to Lucas Kroll. Lucas fumbles the very next play. Jonah Ellis, who seeing him in real life in person, his hands hang down like past his, his knees. Like that dude is a physical specimen and the exact body type that you want. It's that really long arm that you you see with like a, a Von Miller, that very next play Jonah Ellis causes an interception because of the incredible, uh, get off he had on the line that he forced to pick with, you know, really hitting the quarterback in the backfield. So then the Denver Broncos get the ball again. Bo Nix very backed up with now only a minute and 20 left with one timeout. And he leads a drive all the way back here. And when was the last time you saw the Broncos with a minute and 20 do anything good? You're like, oh, let's just get to halftime tied up. 
No, not not for Bo Chapman Nix. He he drives, um, finds the open man, puts the ball where it needs to go. Again, does not get happy feet and tries to run. He, Lucas Kroll getting the ball back to him here, I thought was great because it allowed him to redeem the worst play of the game, which was his own fumble there um, in the two-minute drill. He goes to Lucas Kroll the next two plays in a row uh, right here. Um, and seeing that, you know, all of a sudden now with Lutz, we're almost in field goal range right there with 46 seconds left in the game uh, or 46 seconds left in the second half. Uh, seeing him here again, just loved him stepping up into the pocket. And uh, the, again, that was the catchable ball uh, right there. And maybe that was the one I thought Vele should have caught. I said he should have caught the other one. Maybe it was that one that I, I thought hit his hands and he could have caught. Uh, l- looking at... Um, Bo Nix does not get flustered, and it, it's incredible, incredible to see. Uh, time ticking down here. Now we're at the 40-second mark. I think one of the things I noticed was Bo Nix throwing off-platform a lot, and I, I think what we'll start to see as he learns the game and it slows down even more from him, that he'll have his feet set and that ball will get there even faster. There are a lot of times where he still was incredibly accurate with the ball, but he's thrown off of a, um, you know, he's kind of still leaning or he's on one foot or – He's on the move, and I think what you see, a difference between him and Stidham is like Stidham is always very sure-footed, and I think we'll just see that really improve with Bo Nix, that those off-platform throws he won't have to do as much, but he still has the ability to do it. Uh, so little Jordan Humphreys there. Uh, we're, we're now down to the 30-second mark, and I'm like, oh, we're not getting points on this drive probably. And um, right there, Vele drew two defensive pass interferences play uh penalties this game and you just saw he is a lock to make this team and i think a lot of people were wondering why we picked him in the seventh round and it was crystal clear that um this dude is different that um drawn two defensive pass interferences and i think he had two or three catches in this game so now all of a sudden here we are and uh bo Nix hits again and i believe we have our timeout and we use it here here was the the miscommunication here he thinks Vele is going to the sticks out here for the fade, and Vele um, cuts in there. And he was probably open there, but I'm, I'm sure Bo was instructed, do not take a sack, get rid of it, and there's just a miscommunication there. Uh, and then we settled for f- points uh, with a field goal there. I think we probably could have making one more um, run at it, but I love Sean Payton being like, hey, we were a horrible red zone, red zone team last year. We are going to get points, and... Uh, I think we'll do a bigger breakdown on uh, just the rest, the press conferences, all that tomorrow because I see that I'm already at 12-minute mark. But I'm just telling you, buy your stock in Bo Nix. He is the real deal. We have a ton to Bo leave in. I really wanted to make that. Oh, what was your favorite uh, play from the Broncos' first preseason game? Let me know in the comments.